Hello everybody. Um, just wanted to do this video overview of an Excel spreadsheet that I'm using to um, store the statistics for uh, an MLB mini season that I'm doing 1979 with payoff pitch baseball. Um, a couple people have requested that I share it, so I figured I'd do a quick video overview. This is the spreadsheet, and it has these uh, sheets included in it, these tabs. We have standings, uh, a schedule. On the schedule, I have eight teams I'm using in this mini league. So I'm going to share this spreadsheet, but I'm warning you that there are a lot of gotchas in it because there's a lot of calculated fields. And though I'm sharing it, there's some things you're going to do to it that might mess it up. So I'll try to share some things I know about it. I'm used to working in it, um, but there's a lot of places that'll get you and mess it up. So um, anyway, I'll make a place where you can download it and share that link, and you can always download a brand new sheet if you need to. So I've only included eight teams here, <clears throat> and I put my schedule here. You can do your schedule however you want here. Um, if Red Sox are playing Cleveland and they win, uh, you just put a, a capital W here, and their winning record will increase by one. It was automatically calculated here, and it will display out here um, on the standing sheet. The top 10 batting and top 10 pitching. I don't know if I've corrected it on this one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Uh, are coming from these tabs. These are basically uh, a link of the top 10 from here. And you have to be careful here. This is the batting statistics that are links from all these other sheets, individual team sheets. They're all linked here to create a uh, batting, uh, average, batting statistics overview. So you have to make sure you have all the columns here selected before you sort the batting tab by batting average. Uh, first by hits and then by batting average. Once you get, um, if I do it without the hits, if I do it just by batting average, <clears throat> you'll see that some people that don't have a batting average will go to the top. Um, that's why I do hits first just to kind of um, filter that out. So whatever's here, the top 10 will show up here. So you can see Fisk is there, and he shouldn't be. Because <clears throat> he doesn't, he hasn't appeared in my, in my replay yet. I guess he was injured or something at the beginning of the year. And that's why I had the hits at the top, just to filter that kind of stuff out. So now uh, you can see that Dave Parker is just killing it. And, of course, this is 20 at-bats, but he just hit his third home run today in a game I played. So now you'll see that he's listed at the top. And this is the batting average, home runs, RBIs, and stolen bases. Same with the pitching. It comes from the pitching tab. And this is a, a compilation of all the pitching the only the top four starters from each of these uh, individual teams tabs. So make sure you select all the columns. Otherwise, you'll get the teams and the names mismatched if you do a data sort without them selected. Data has headers. I'm going to search sort first by innings pitched and then the ERA and then. So now these top 10 here will show up here. And as you go to each team's tab, they're all the same. They all function the same. They have <clears throat> some um, payoff pitch specific items here. The on-screen dice roll is specific to payoff pitch. There's an individual 1D6 roll in case you need an, uh, a 1D6 roll sometimes, and a secondary uh, 2D10 roll there. And there's also the sacrifice chart that, um, since it's used kind of um, more often than the other parts of the charts that I don't have represented here, 
I wanted to include that. So I have minimal references to the charts because I've got the stealing portion here, uh, the flyout portion that I look at to make sure if I advance runners or not. Uh, I've automated the single runner on first, single on second, uh, what happens to the runner on a double from first base, and defense. Uh, if you get a defense check, you can look here, and it'll tell you that you want to look at the second baseman, fielding check 68. And of course, that's on the ballpark card. And if you get a hit, error, or out, uh, this is automated from the charts as well. So there's a lot of calculated columns in there. <clears throat> so I score games right here in the spreadsheet. So if there's an out, you want to put an X. And as you go down to the next batter, you'll get a fresh dice roll. Say he gets a single, I put S. And you see you get a fresh dice roll. Sometimes these base runner uh, calculations will reference the umpire. This is the umpire. If it references the umpire, this is his call for that runner. Say the next batter, Freddie Lynn, hits a double. Double with an asterisk. That's an RBI. And Freddie was then given an extra RBI. And to prove that, I'll hit undo. And you'll see Freddie goes back to one RBI. Put it back in there, and it's calculated automatically in his at bats. <clears throat> Somebody strikes out, you put a K. So these are the values that are programmed into the auto calculation here if you want to use this scoreboard piece. X for an out, and what's that? That's that's three outs. So then you would go down here. Say the Red Sox are playing at Cleveland. Then, I mean, at Dodgers. We're going to pick the Dodgers. What I would do is grab the Dodgers and paste here. I'm going to paste special and I'm going to paste the values because some of those fields were calculated. So now I've got the Dodgers. Uh, I put it in the wrong spot. I'm going to undo, and that should go up there because the Dodgers name goes there. Pay special values. So now we're in the bottom of the first. If Davey Lopes was up and uh, he hits a single, um, and then Russell hits a home run, two asterisks because two RBIs. And you can see it's all calculated here and then they get an out an out and an out uh, the only other thing I think that I haven't shown you yet is a steal so somebody gets a single and they steal put a little O and you can see he got a stolen base there so a small O will, will put a, uh, a steal in there so these are calculated and I just go through and I score my game as I'm playing uh, he gets a walk, and he gets out, and I go down here, um, he gets out, he strikes out, and um, so anyway, that's kind of how I do it. You have here, say you have your pitchers over here, um, let's say uh, Tiant is on the mound, he's the pitcher, so when it comes time to doing his stats, <clears throat> say I took him out at this point look at the Dodgers box score here he's pitched two innings and then I'm just going to look here runs are two hits two walks zero K's one so I'm just going to pop that in here and then you can see two two zero one these will then zero out because there's calculated uh these are calculated columns in here, and it's using the information here and counting here and representing here. So now when the next picture comes in, um, whoever that is, say it's Spaceman, once there's more information in the box score, oh, 
and then there's a single, and a double, and a triple, which we haven't had, and then an out, an out, and an out. Say it's time to take the spaceman out. He has an appearance. And now I can see that he pitched two in, so he must have pitched two. And now again, I just reference here. Two runs, three hits, zero walks, one K. So I'm just going to pop those figures in there. And it will zero out these figures here. And I'm ready. Uh, these will be the figures for the next pitcher that's entered in here. I can also take these numbers, like for Tiant. I'm not sure if he's listed over here yet. Let's say it was Eckersley. Okay, so let's say it was Eckersley. So what I can do is copy this. <clears throat> and go to Eckersley over here and uh, do a special paste and say add. And it added his values to the spreadsheet. So that's what I've done there. The other thing that you don't have to use this. You can just take this out. After a game, what I do is I take this part and paste it over here so I can do the next game. Uh, insert copied cells, shift cells right. So all the games you do that way using the scoreboard are retained over here. And then you go back to the scoreboard and you clear this out is the way it works. And then you can do your next game. But it might be hard for some people. You can see that the numbers are in negative because I need to clear these out from that game, and then that'll zero that out. But the other part that people might be interested in using is right here. Hidden cells between A and I can be unhidden, and you can just populate your stats here. You can say, oh, he had three at-bats, and he had a hit. And those will update the statistics as well. So they can come from here by entering uh, those key letters that are recognized by the code here while keeping score. Or you can just go in here and enter. Say he went 0 for 5. Just boom, like that. And those statistics are also incorporated in these. So that's about it. I'm just going to go ahead and share this out. But I wanted to kind of go over a few things. There's a lot of gotchas in here. but some people might be able to take this and run with it. Um, some others might not want to be able to use something like this. So anyway, it is what it is. It's what I'm using for some of my games uh, when I'm not using electronic scoreboard. If I use electronic scoreboard, I typically will export the um, results and paste them in here um, in this area to the right of the scoreboard. Uh, paste just the values or to go ahead and paste them right in from the spreadsheet that is exported from the score sheet and then those statistics are automatically calculated in here. <clears throat> okay, I can take any questions on the forum but I just want to go ahead and get a video out there uh, about this spreadsheet uh, at the same time that I share it out. Thanks for watching.